friends today we would be doing the identification of lead ions the three basic steps are to prepare the original solution adding the group reagent to original solution and dividing the precipitate into three parts and doing specific tests first of all let's inspect the solid salt then we will prepare the original solution add the group reagent and divide the precipitate to three parts the solid salt is white and crystalline. Now we prepare the original solution. The original solution is a clear transparent solution of the salt. It is most commonly prepared by dissolving the salt in water. If the salt is insoluble in water, we prepare by other methods which will be described later. The next step is to add the group reagent into the original solution. Original solution is abbreviated by OS. So step 1 is to take the OS in a test tube and now we will add the group reagent. The group reagent for group 1 is dilute hydrochloric acid. On adding the dilute hydrochloric acid you can see the formation of a white precipitate. The white precipitate formed is heavier hence it settles down in the bottom of the test tube. Now we will divide the precipitate into three parts. Before dividing the precipitate we will first discard the liquid layer formed above the precipitate in the test tube. We will add a little bit of distilled water so that the quantity is increased so that we can divide them into three test tubes. For that we will take three clean and dry test tubes. Now we will divide the precipitate equally into these three test tubes. These three test tubes will be used for three specific confirmatory tests for lead ions. The original solution gave us a white precipitate of lead chloride. Lead chloride is soluble in hot water and insoluble in cold water. The first confirmatory test is the potassium iodide test where we boil the precipitate to dissolve it and then add potassium iodide solution. Step 1 is to boil the precipitate and dissolve the precipitate. You can see that on boiling the precipitate is dissolving and the solution has turned clear. The next step is to add the potassium iodide solution. This is a peculiar reaction. On adding the potassium iodide we obtain a yellow precipitate which is soluble in hot solution and on cooling it precipitates out as golden yellow crystals and this is the classical experiment called as the golden drain. You can watch this experiment as I have done this before and the link is provided in the description. You can see the bright yellow color. On adding the potassium iodide solution a displacement reaction took place leading to formation of the yellow precipitate of lead iodide. Potassium chromate test. Here we boil the second part of the precipitate and add potassium chromate solution. Step 1 is to boil the precipitate. As I said before on boiling the lead chloride which is formed will dissolve in hot solution and we get a clear solution. Next we add the potassium chromate solution. You can see that the potassium chromate has a yellow color but it is a clear solution. Now on adding the potassium chromate into the dissolved precipitate solution we get a bright yellow precipitate. And now we will be adding 
excess of sodium hydroxide into this precipitate. The sodium hydroxide that I am adding is already heated to boil and now on adding the hot sodium hydroxide solution you can see that the precipitate is slowly dissolving and the solution is acquiring a yellow color. I will mix the solution with a glass rod and you can see that the precipitate has dissolved and the solution has turned into a bright yellow color. The yellow precipitate formed was lead chromate which dissolved in hot concentrated sodium hydroxide to form a complex called sodium tetrahydroxoplumbate 2. The dilute sulfuric acid test involves boiling the third part of the precipitate to dissolve it and then we add dilute sulfuric acid. Step 1 is to boil the precipitate to dissolve it and after dissolving it we will be adding the dilute sulfuric acid. This test has been already performed as a confirmatory test for sulfates. You can see that in the previous video. And here I am adding the dilute sulfuric acid. You can clearly see that on adding the dilute sulfuric acid, there is formation of a white precipitate. Now we will try to dissolve this in excess of ammonium acetate in acetic acid solution. You can see that on adding this solution, the precipitate has started to dissolve and the solution has turned clear. The white insoluble precipitate formed was lead sulfate which is soluble in ammonium acetate in acetic acid forming ammonium tetraacetoplumbate 2 complex. Precautions, lead salts and chromium salts are altogether grouped under carcinogens. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell button so that you will not miss my new videos. Have a nice time learning. Bye.